Hello, today we'll be looking at what's in this little brown box from AKK Tech. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon, click on it, it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. What do we have here from AKK? AKK have done quite a few, mostly VTXs, and this is no different, except it is different because what the VTX looks like. Let's open the box, I'll show you what we're dealing with. First sight, it's a regular 20mm sort of board, but there is something weird about it, and I'll show you what it is. It has got, if you can see that, two MMCX adapters in there. And if I go further in and go underneath, what we also get in the box is a product instruction manual and two antennas. And then we get this arrangement. I'll tell you why this is weird. Um, because it's quite a common thing, when we talk about uh, having the wrong polarity or having an antenna being blocked by a battery, a common thing for a person to say is, hey, why don't you just have another antenna on it, like antenna diversity in your receiver? And the answer is generally, we're trying to avoid what's called multi-pathing. Multi-pathing is when your signal goes, let's say this is a single antenna. If your signal goes somewhere, it bounces off a, a sort of a hard object, comes back and hits your goggles. At the same time, a, a different signal is coming directly to you and you've got these sort of two images, so you've got what's called multipathing basically, you've got two slightly different images at the same time and that causes weirdness and noise, um, although things like the rapid fire do their best to sort of construct a full frame. So you're trying to avoid multipathing by staying away from particularly difficult settings like you know if you're going to buy concrete buildings that's somewhere where things are going to sort of bounce around if you're going over fields you won't see it but when you put two antennas on the first thing you think of is like i'm going to get multi-pathing because i'm going to get one from this antenna one from that antenna they're going to be slightly out of sync and they're going to make things bad but i don't know have akk tested this and thought about it i couldn't really get much detail on it so i thought well let's connect it up to a quad and let's fly with it and we'll see what happens Pretty flexible in how this works and a lot of standard things. 7 to 35 volt input, it has a 5 volt output so you can power a camera through it and it supports smart audio. So all good there, I'm going to install it on a quad, we're going to try and fly it. I'm hoping, because obviously it's going to be laid out like this, I need to, <laughs> I need to keep these bits away from uh, any propellers. I kind of would have preferred it if like maybe one was pointing upwards or they had an option to point upwards. but. Well, we'll see how it looks and we'll see what we need to do. We might put zip ties or something to keep these out of the way. But let's go and install it and we'll see what happens. Well, here it is. I've gone ahead and I've made up a little connector here. So I've soldered it in. And this is it on a little three inch. This is the Lau 3. And it's a 20 mil board. So this is the kind of quad you'd expect to go on. You can see a slight problem here with the, the way the antennas are. That one's going to be all right. This one's going to have a problem. And because this bit doesn't bend, we are in serious danger there of, of taking a prop out. I did have a, a little bit more of a look on the website which they had updated since I last got it to try and explain what they were doing and you will notice there's an R there and there's an L on this one and if we correspond that here we've got an L we've got an R so they have polarized them different this one is right hand this one is left hand again I still don't get why they're doing that in terms of what multipathing does and how a circular polarized antenna helps. It's quite handy to think of like right hand or left hand as the way it goes. So right hand, if you mention something spinning to the right, it's only gonna pick up things spinning to the right. When a signal, if you like spinning to the right, if you can visualize that, hits something, it bounces off, it starts spinning to the left. And that means that that right hand polarized antenna deals with the multipathing because it rejects it. It's bounced off something, it knows about it. With this situation, you're getting potentially normal ones and bounces from the left or if, if everything if everything bounces then you're getting nothing from this one and something from that one i don't know i just don't know what it's going to be like it's quite a bizarre concept and we're dealing with a single polarity receiver on on the goggles and it, it, i've read through it and it doesn't say to use anything but that so i guess we're just going to have to basically fly it and see what happens my my biggest problem at the moment is how to get that intact if i put the top on um i'm going to have to do something to try and get that up there i wish this was like a a right-handed something so i could i could secure it easier but uh, okay we'll see we'll see what we can do and then we'll take it out and we'll see what happens i may be my worries may be proven completely wrong we'll find out hello here we are gonna try and fly this thing you can see what i've had to do i've had to loop in the right hand polarized antenna 
with a rubber band to the battery strap because else it would just get mangled by the props and the the other one looks a bit awkward as well so all over a little bit awkward it looks like it's designed for a three inch but the sort of geometry of how the antennas come out is not very good however let's test it out see how it does i'm not expecting any particular problems because we're in a big field here it feels like this wants to get rid of multipathing but at the same time causes them so let's let's just see what happens Okay, so first battery and we're away. I'm testing first on the 25 milliwatt settings just to see how things are going. And instantly I'm noticing the entire image does seem to be flickering um, a lot more than I would expect. Now, to be fair, flying this area, I'm often getting sort of little weirdness um, where the, the, the blueness in the sky does flicker a bit. But this does seem to be on the entire frame and seems to be really quite noticeable, much more than I'd normally see it. Often in these videos, um, what I have going on in the goggles is different than the DVR I'm looking at in my editing program, and that's different again when it gets onto YouTube, because the compression YouTube uses sometimes make things look a lot worse and sometimes make things look better. So you're going to have to go on how I remember things as opposed to what it actually looks like. Yeah, but this looked... This looked really weird. It, it looked like it was being affected. So I landed up to the power. I actually thought that the the, um, the second band was 200 milliwatts as per usual, but it's actually just 50 milliwatts. So as you can imagine, 50 milliwatts is not all that different than 25 milliwatts. It's like a little bit more power. It's not double. You'd have to go uh, a lot more power to, to get double. Um, you'd have to go to 100, in fact, to sort of double the power. Or double the range of 25 milliwatts so this is again still a bit ropey there's there's that sort of flickering of the screen but there's also some noise appearing as we go on the turn there so I was thinking well this isn't very good but I, I did think this was 200 at the time and it's not it's only uh, 50 so I, I put the power all the way up to the top um, and as it is the third power here so if it was R13 that would be 200 I went all the way up to R14 this is 400 milliwatts so this is the max power output of this VTX and so you'd expect something reasonable and the, the overwhelming thing I'm seeing is that flickering on the screen and I have to think this is because it's managing to multipath in an environment where you shouldn't be getting any multipathing and the entire thing looks really quite odd to me uh, and I really have to say I, I didn't like it I didn't like flying with it at all um, it's not a particularly nice experience. I'm getting a sort of full screen flicker on everything. Uh, we're not getting the little sort of snowy bits here. So it's certainly that the power is okay. You can tell that. But our received picture is um, it is, doesn't seem to be that good. We are, we are getting far too much screen flicker uh, for my liking. Um, and yeah. I'm not liking it. I did try flying this around um, on each of the batteries. I, I went around and I, I flew it a bit, going around different bits to see how it would hold up in different areas of the field. And, um, you know, it was it was all the same. It was a, a bit noisy. It had the flicker. Uh, generally speaking, I didn't like it. I wasn't enjoying flying with this at all. So pretty much I brought it down and um, I was instantly ready to take this VTX off and uh, try something else again. And just going up high, seeing how it all works with uh, the signal in different area, and it's it's just all much of a muchness, really. It it nothing's nothing's changing. Uh, we sometimes we get a bit more noise, but no matter where we are, it's it's always there. I couldn't even cheer myself up by chasing seagulls. So yeah, brought it down. Didn't like it. Well, I think it's fair to say I I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. It seems to come off worse than a regular VTX. If you looked at a video I did not long ago where I used a little tiny tank VTX on this little thing, it was giving a much better signal than this was on higher power. And I think it's down to the fact that this thing is multipathing. Perhaps you're supposed to have a left-hand polarized antenna on your goggles coupled with a right-hand one, but I still don't see how that's really gonna solve the issue. It's just, you get a stronger signal on one side than the other, but you'll still have the wrong polarization also transmitting at the same time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't think it's very useful. And this layout is particularly bad for anybody that uses props. Little right-hand angled uh, MMCX connectors would have, would have 
been much more sensible there. For now, I can't really recommend this. Perhaps I've been doing it wrong. If you know what I'm doing wrong, feel free to tell me and I can always go out and try again having corrected it. But for now, I'm going to take this off and put a, a proper VTX back on again because I don't like this at all, I'm afraid. Anyway, this was kindly supplied by AKK Tech, so if you want to check it out, and um, I do like their VTXs, just not this one, their, their regular ones are fine, then uh, you can find details down below in the description. In the meantime, I hope that review's been helpful and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.